What's up everybody? Welcome to my channel, Driver Ryan. Today we are finally moving forward with Project Miata and we'll be installing some fun parts. Up until this point, we've kind of just been getting it prepped for parts. You know, I took the AC out, took the power steering out, took some emissions junk out that you don't need. But today we are going to install, which in my opinion is the ultimate front sway bar package for an NA NB Miata. We have a racing beat, front tubular sway bar, flying Miata end links, and stout mounts. Alright, let's have a closer look at each of these parts and I'll explain to you why I think the end links, sway bar, and these mounts are the best in each category. And really, all together, it's like the complete best package for a Miata. So starting with the racing beat front tubular sway bar, it's both thicker and lighter than the stock front sway bar that you see here. So that's a win-win right off the bat. The Racing Beat sway bar is 1.125 inches thick and weighs five and a half pounds, while the little front sway bar is three quarters inches thick and weighs six pounds. So can't go wrong there. And everyone, I mean literally just about everyone I know in the Miata world runs this sway bar. It's proven, it's strong, it's light. It's just, it's the way to go. Moving on to end links, I chose Flying Miata end links. First of all, they look great. There's no denying that. Um, but you know, that's not the reason why you choose end links is because of their looks. I chose the Flying Miata end links because they're fully adjustable so you could remove any preload from the sway bar during install. They also have rubber bushings, so it should be quiet. This is the, where it mounts to the stock mounts on the Miata. So this should be good for long lasting durability and like I said, quietness. And on the other side, where it mounts to the sway bar itself, they chose to go with a ball joint. So this is also for long term durability, quietness, and just overall freedom of movement. So everything should work in harmony together and it's just a great, great design. Oh, Let's move on to the stout mounts. Which, if you're tracking your car, this is a must-have modification because, first of all, look at the stock mounts. They're, they're like loose leaf paper thin. Not going to hold up to anything unless you install either these mounts or the racing beat blocks and bolts, which is what I installed on my Red Miata. That video is on the slip angle if you want to see that one. It's the thumbnail with my girlfriend's butt cheeks front and center i did a little experiment to see if it get views and you know sure enough got the views but no butt cheeks in the garage today just me and the parts i'm sorry i'll get them back in another video but these mounts are good for na and nb miatas they have the mounting holes for both so you don't have to worry about if you chose the right ones or not they're fully boxed in they're not gonna flex at all, not even a little bit. They come with hardware and, well they come with hardware for both mounting solutions. The threads are a little smaller I believe on the NBs and the NAs, yeah that's what it looks like. But yeah, overall it's a good kit. I bought this from Goodwin Racing because they were on sale, they were a little cheaper there. You could also get them on Flying Miata and I'm sure a million other places, AWR probably. Um, yeah, probably just about anywhere, but I'll put the link to all of these parts below so you could just click it and there they are. Boom. Easy. So I have a feeling these are going to be a little tight, tight fit and kind of a pain to install. So I'm going to get my hammer out. I know someone's going to take that the wrong way, but I'm going to get, get the hammer out and uh, film it, see how it goes. Something to note, if you plan on installing the stout mounts, it is a lot more work than the racing beat blocks and bolts. So probably set, probably a day aside, do this job. Here's why. I reinstalled the stock sway bar mount just to show you. For one thing, if you have a car with power steering, the power steering lines go right through the mount. It's uh, They just loop around to the front so that the fluid can get cooled down and then it loops back to the rack. So I, I already looped my lines because I'm going to be depowering this rack, but you see where the stock 
hose would go and here's my loop that I did so that's one reason you're gonna have to at least disconnect that loop but then you could reinstall it and rerun those lines through the new mount the stock mounts are held on by two bolts on either side of the frame rail but also there's two spot welds which I already drilled out and I showed you exactly how to do that in the previous video that was kind of a video on its own because well it's kind of a lot to it but it's pretty easy if you follow the video but yeah there's two spot welds on either side of the frame rail you gotta drill them out and then they could come loose but in order to drill those out you need some room so it's highly recommended you take your radiator out and all of the hoses just to have enough room to drill those out so that's why this job kind of takes a long time and then if you're like me and you have OCD you uh you paint your frame rails so that took a lot of time taping you can see I went all the way back you can see where the line is on both sides and on the driver's side painted the whole frame rail gloss black to match everything from the factory came out real nice but it's been 48 hours since I painted it so it should be cured and ready to install the new mounts let's see if these are as tight as everyone says they are I'm willing to bet that uh that they are I'm just gonna get these bolts started on this side I have a feeling it's gonna be freaking tight yeah it's tight hammer time okay not like that so I've been hammering away here I got three out of four bolts in and lined the one that's giving me a little trouble is this one not lining up perfectly so I think I'm going to take a block of wood Put it under here and then try and just get this up just a tad so i could get that bolt started let's try that both bolts are in on both sides as you can see now i'm going to take them out one at a time Put anti-seize on them and then reinstall and torque these down to 20 foot pounds. And then we'll do that side and then we can put the sway bar on. All right, after a lot of smashing and banging with my hammer and a piece of wood, I got this side on and then I painted over it so that it looks almost OEM. I can't even tell. But thank God the paint is dry and now I can finally put the sway bar on. Here, I'll show you the other side. Quickly, it's dark under here. But, okay, the other side's good to go. I looped the line in the charcoal canister, and we're good. Let's get to the sway bar. This side's good, painted. Well, might as well finish off here. And here is the driver's side. Not bad. I'm no professional painter by any means. Kind of hate it, but it's all right. I also trimmed and painted the radiator support brackets. You don't need to trim them. This is what I trimmed here. Jeez, I'm not even focus on the right thing. I trimmed it right here a little bit because there's about an eighth inch of clearance between the supports and the new mounts, which is probably okay, but if it if I put it all back together and it's vibrating, it, it would drive me absolutely insane. So I cut it, painted it, and we should be good to go because in the next video, we're going to be going through the whole cooling system. Live look. The professional studio I got going on here. So I'm going to throw the front sway bar and end links on. I'm going to give you a brief rundown of the tools and torque specs for everything. It's, it's so easy to do. Trust me. Um, okay. Tools. So, like I said before, the stout mounts come with bolts for the NB Miata and the NA Miata. And these use a 13 millimeter socket. So that's all you need to know for that. The brackets, uh, torque them to 20 foot pounds. That's it. Don't go crazy. Never go too crazy and strip anything. Put anti-season everything. That's what I always recommend. 
For the Flying Miata and Lynx, you're gonna need a 17 millimeter wrench and a, what is this? This is a five millimeter Allen head key. It's hard to see. But basically, filming this on my phone, it's kinda hard. Just this seat on my phone. But to tighten it, put the Allen key. If this looks rusty and crusty, it's because this was in my red car for a little bit. We'll clean up everything nice. So you could hold the bolt with your Allen key so it doesn't spin and then tighten it with your wrench. That's all there is to it. I can't remove the preload from the sway bar right now because well, the car is not ready to go back on the ground yet. But I did do a video on the slip angle with Matt and Quinn of throwing this exact sway bar on the Red Rocket. So if you want a detailed explanation of removing preload, go check that out. But basically you wanna have the driver or someone the same weight as the driver sit in the car. And then once, then you'll have someone underneath and you will adjust these end links up or down until this bolt passes right through the sway bar without any, like it should pass right through without any tension. And then all the preload is removed, you can tighten it all down. So that's that. That's all there is to it. I'm gonna throw it on. And this should be done. Also, don't forget, lube. Lube your bushings. Take some of this, put it on your finger, swirl it around, then you can install. Lisa Lampanelli is gonna burn my eyeballs out. <sighs> Guys and gals, that's it for this one. Hope you enjoyed that video and I hope it was helpful. I truly do think this is the ultimate sway bar setup for your NA and B Miata. So go tackle it yourself. It's more work than the racing beat, blocks and bolts, but in the end it's just a better setup. And you don't have to go back and check your nuts, so. You know, that's always a good thing. All right, I'll see you in the next one. Like, comment, subscribe, engage with me as much as possible. I really think that helps the YouTube algorithm. And if you have any questions, comment or message me on Instagram at DriverRyan. Thanks again. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.